Hello, so let's go ahead and uh, start implementing this and make one conversion. So first step is to build the view, so we need a button. I need a text field first, so here is the text field component, which allow you to edit a text. So uh, we'll bring in a text field, align it in a certain way, as you want. I'll just align it like that, maybe. Yeah, here yeah, is good. So this is the text field, and then if you switch to the attribute inspector, you can see some attributes for the text field. You can specify what text you want to display. You can specify the text, the color of the text. Um, you can specify the font, alignment, placeholder. A placeholder is very uh, powerful because um, it it shows what it, it gives you an ability to tell the user what you want them to do and at the same time once the user start entering it disappears by itself versus text where the user will have to delete it so we'll put a placeholder here and say enter an amount to convert you can specify a background image a border style um, you because the text field is going to bring a keyboard and the keyboard is an interesting concept here. The keyboard is um, is managed by the operating system, and the text field doesn't have the keyboard, and your app doesn't have the keyboard. All what the text field will do once the text field receives the focus, the user clicks on the text field. The operating system will deliver to the text field a keyboard. What you can do here is you can specify some of the characteristics of the keyboard that you would like the operating system to give you. Um, so we can come here and say, do you want uh, everything to be capital? Uh, I'm going to use it for numbers, so I don't need it. Do you want corrections? Um, do you want spell check? Do you want uh, what kind of keyboard? Do you want an ASCII keyboard, a number pad, a number and punctuation, a decimal? So I want a decimal pad, uh, appearance, dark or light. What do you want the return key to say? Uh, you can say done, you can say go. Let's use done. You can leave it as is, it will be return. There's another thing on the text field, the property is called clear. Uh, when the user enters something, you know there's this uh, X that can show in the text field. You probably used it before. If you click the X, it will clear the text field. So um, we can say that uh, we want the clear button never to show, shows while you're editing, uh, always visible. Um, I like to show while editing. Uh, when the user start editing, do you want to clear everything or if the user can just change some digits? So it's up to you here. I'm just going to clear everything uh, in here. So that's the text field and its properties. Then we bring in a button. I'm going to put it here next to the text field. And I'm going to call this button convert. So this is the text on the button. Um, there are different properties for the button. You can specify the color, you can specify the size, the same, the same kind of things. Uh, and uh, that's all. So the last thing we want is a label. So I'll put the label in here. And the label will carry our result. So the result might be long. So I'm going to make it two lines. Give it a little bit, uh, two lines height. And I don't want any text on it. So I'm going to take out that label thing on the label text. So it's empty in the beginning. And then give it a color. Uh, you can use the same color or a different color and you can uh, adjust the size that you want on the color and we got a warning so you can check that uh, it might be related to the color or something uh, so we have two lines everything so that's that looks good so I have everything I need so the next step will be to uh, so I'm done with this step is to make the connections. So to make the connections, I no longer need the utility area. Bring in my assistant editor. And to make some room, I can also take out my project uh, navigation area. 
and here is my um, view and here is the controller of that view and I want to connect some of the components on the view to the controller so that the controller can work with them the first one is the text field so control drag and it is an outlet and the type is a text field I'm gonna name it text amount the prefix is to indicate that this is the component and then connect then I'm gonna take the label and one thing about the label that I just noticed it's a little bit low and I have some room in the top so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit so are these two I'm gonna bring them up a little bit the reason I'm bringing them up because the keyboard is gonna come and I don't want the keyboard to cover it so I'll take the label control and drag and it's a, I'm gonna call it label result then uh, take the first picker view and this is an outlet it's a picker view um, so I'm gonna call it uh, picker view unit from so this is the picker view that will represent the unit from then I'm gonna take the second one and I'm gonna say picker view unit to the unit that you convert to and that gives me all the outlets that I need then I need uh, the action from the button so I select the button control and drop it somewhere you need to drop it within the class so I'm gonna drop it at the end right before the end of the class make sure you do not drop it inside any of the other functions so I'll drop it here and this is not an outlet I want an action connection do I want any arguments I don't need any arguments so I'll choose none for the arguments and then I'm gonna call this convert so this is a function that will convert the units so hit enter and you'll see here there's a function added and that's what I call a user action uh, function so I connected everything and I have my user action function so now it's ready to start implementing the uh, different steps from the controller. What I need to do here is step number one, retrieve the amount that the user entered. Then step number two, retrieve the uh, unit that the user selected to convert from. Then I wanted to retrieve the unit that the user selected to convert to because I don't know any of these these are what we call dynamic things that will show up once the app starts working then step number four I need to uh, apply the conversion formula based on the units selected or I'm gonna use here use if statement and then step number five uh, display the results as a string in uh, in the label or uh, con yeah display the results in the label so five main steps so let's see what instructions can we write to retrieve the amount from the user so how can we write an instruction to get the amount from the text field the user enters the amount in the text field and we connected the text field as an outlet so can the text field give us its value let's see let's ask you can search for a text field and see if you can get its value or you can hit the dot in the previous project we would hit the dot to access the text field let's go ahead and do some research so I'll go to the documentation and API and type UI text field and go to see what the text field has so this is some description in the text field and then you can see here the tasks of the text field so you can get the text on the text field 
You can manage edit behavior, background, accessing delegates. So you can have a delegate on the text field. There are some constants, there are some notifications. So text here give you, it's a, a property, it's a value that is of type string that allow you to get the text uh, value. So we can use this, but it gives us the text as a string. But I have an amount, so that's going to be a problem. I'll probably need to make conversions. So I'll say to the text field, text amount dot text. So that gives you the uh, amount as a string. So I need to assign this to memory so I can deal with it. So I'll say let text, let uh, I'm call it amount as text or amount as string equal text amount dot text. So that gives me the amount as a string, but I cannot multiply a string. So I need to convert that. So this will be uh, first uh, get the amount as type string. Then we need to convert the, the amount from a string to a decimal type float. You can't unfortunately do that directly from a string. So we need uh, an intermediary. We need uh, somebody to uh, negotiate that and facilitate that conversion. And there is a library called NSNumber that can do that facilitation. So I'll come here and say to make the conversion uh, create an NS number for matter object to convert the string to a number to an ns number type and I don't need the assistant editor so I'm gonna make some room for myself here So I'll say to uh, NS number. So there's a, a library called NS number for matter, and I can create an NS number for matter in order to use it and make a conversion from the string to a number. So I'll say let, and I'll call it number uh, for mat or number or uh, helper or conversion helper. Then I will use this number helper, use the uh, number for matter to convert from string type to NS number type. So I'll say number helper dot uh, uh, number from a string. So the number from a string takes a string and give you back an NS number object. So I'll use amount as a string, and I need to assign this to one of my variables. So I'll say let uh, number equal, uh, or I can call it amount as number. So the amount as number. And then I go to step number three and um, you use the number to convert to or retrieve the float type, uh, convert the NS number to a float type. And the, um, the number has different functions that can convert and give you the different types, the boolean type, the integer type, the float type, all of them. So I can say float value and it gives me float. I can say integer value and it gives me an integer and so on. So I'll say float value and, uh, and then it gives me the float value. And notice it put here a question mark. The reason it did this, if you go back to this number from a string, Number from a string gives you back an optional type, NS number, as option. See that question mark? When you have something like this, 
you can do the binding um, because we had the equal which basically will create the type the same way it comes here so the equal made my amount as number as if I did something like that in as numbered question mark so as if I created the number as an optional type because it comes back from the method as an optional type so in order to access an optional type you will use the exclamation the question mark or I can do the binding from here by using the exclamation mark and in this case I don't need that question mark anymore so whenever you see the question mark coming back from a library just to do the binding uh, there by adding the exclamation mark at the end so amount as number uh, float and then I put this as amount uh, which is the actual amount that I need to convert so as you can see one step I retrieved the text amount but because I had to convert from a string to a float I had to do three instructions and you will see this a lot that the basic idea we need to do is straightforward but in order to deal with the different libraries and the types that they give you we're gonna need to manipulate some conversions and you can search uh, for uh, these conversions you will build your own uh, resources after a while or you can look it up in any documentation so now I have the amount and I have it as a decimal number the next is I need to retrieve the unit that the user selected to convert from. The user will use the pickle view unit from and will make a selection there. But the pickle view unit from, as we know, that cannot give you what's written in a row, but it can give you using the selected row in component, it can give you an integer that has whatever got selected. We only have one component in the pickle view. The index of that component is zero. So I'll say, give me, I'm asking the you pickle view, I'm saying, give me the index of the selected row in the first component. And then I'm going to assign that index here, and I'm going to call it index from equal. So I'm going to assign it to a local variable index from then use that index to go to the units and say units I want you to give me the object as index using this index from so I have an index and I want the actual unit and give me that unit as a string then I will assign this locally here and say let unit from the unit that the user want to convert from let that be this variable and now I have a string that represent the unit from I need to do exactly the same thing to retrieve the unit that the user will convert to uh, so I'll do something similar and say index 2 equal pickle view unit 2 and say give me your selected row at your first component then I'm gonna define the unit 2 as units dot object at index and use the other index because the same list of units exist it's just the difference of index and if the user oh I need to say as string because the user will just if the user selected both of them to be the same then the conversion formula will be the same so now the next step is to apply the conversion formula so to apply the conversion formula, I need the conversion formula changes based on the actual unit. So I need first to verify what unit I am selecting. So I say if, and the if statement, the if statement will require a condition. So I say if the unit from equal feet, because I named it as feed, by the way. You have to use exactly the way you named it. If the unit from is feed, then I open the block. And then this means that if this is true, if this uh, comparison is true, 
whatever instruction you put in this block will be executed. If it is false, then it will be skipped and not happen. So I'll say here, if this is true, then um, so this one, check if the unit from was feet. Then I need to check what is the unit two. So I say if unit two equal inch, because this is how I called it, then that. So I have an inside one, check if the unit two was inch. If the user selected the unit from as feet and selected the unit two as inch, then I know the conversion factor. So the conversion factor will be, I can say that uh, the amount as uh, the amount multiplied by 12. That is the conversion factor from feet to inch. Then I need to assign this to a number so I can display it in the result in step number five. So if I define the number like this and say let result equal like that, I will not be able to access it from here. Why? Because there's a block. So if I define a variable with let or var inside a block, it can only be visible, accessible inside that block. So meaning I cannot see it from here. There's actually another block. So how can I define the result such that I can access it here? Then find an outer block that includes both of them, which is the block of the function. So I take out the let from here and then go right before the if and say define the result variable. So I say var result and then define that as float. So now the result can be accessed inside this block and can also be accessed in here. Now the result will have the amount multiplied by 12. Then I need to display it in a label, but the label needs a string. So I need to convert this as a string. In project number module two, we converted from a float to a string using the localized uh, string, which was very good because we were able to uh, use the decimal um, uh, numbers. Uh, we can do the same thing in here. Uh, so I will say let results as string equal string dot localized localized string with format. Then my format will be the first is the amount. So I'll say percent. 0.2f that's the amount so in the arguments I put here amount so I don't forget so amount then I need to do a space and then the unit from so the unit from is an index is a string so I believe I use the at for a string and then come here and say the unit from then I use the equal then the result so a percent this is float that I come here and say result oops and then the unit 2 so space the add for a string and then say unit 2 so that string that will be created will have uh, these units and I have an error here used before being initialized and the reason it is giving me this because it says that you're using the result, but there is a possibility that there will be nothing uh, in the result. So I can assign an initial value here to zero, and that will take this away. Because if the feat is false, it's, the result will not have any value. So that is this one. Right, so, so we got that as a string, then we assign this to the label. So I can, uh, just to, to clarify the step, so this is 5.1, and in 5.1 I just uh, convert or uh, format the result string, then step 2 is assign the result string 
to the um, label. So I say label result dot text equal result as string. So now this is the conversion, five steps. You retrieve the amount that the user entered, retrieve the unit that the user selected to convert from, the one to convert to, apply the conversion formula based on what the user selected. So we use the if statement and then construct the result string and assign it to the label. Now it's time to test. So now to test, I have a testing scenario. And my testing scenario here is that I will put 10 feet and select feet and I should get 120. So this is the expected result. So let's test and see if we get the expected result or if we get something different. So I need to come here and enter uh, 10. And then select feet and inch and then say convert. So click convert. The conversion took place. Here is the result. 10 feet equal 120 inch. Here is what is expected. Here is what we got. 10 feet equal 120 inch, 10 feet equal 120 inch. So the actual result is the same as the expected result. So that this, the solution that I formulated passes, that it meets the scope. So I can come here at the end after the implementation uh, here and I can say testing. And maybe we can add that uh, later on, uh, testing or test as one step and say solution passed. All right, so uh, notice that when we did this full iteration, um, this is a little bit small, it's aligned left, I wanna center it, maybe make it a little bit bigger. In the solution, I have a warning here uh, that the keyboard or something uh, the color that I, something here so I need to take a look at it uh, and we do that when we come back at the start of the next iteration uh, which will be I believe iteration number uh, five so we're done with this iteration four convert from feet to inch iteration five to make all the conversions so do all of them and we'll do that in the next video